Hey y'all, uh, this is Bravery and I am back with a new video. Today's video will be about the Haitian music industry, but this is the only channel or the only place you will be able to watch it. I want to talk about music videos, the way they're made, the way they're released. Particularly, you know, my focus is compa, but other artists in the HMI can take notes from this as well. Now, I will say, to start off with some good, that the quality of our music videos, or the music videos, period, the concept and the quality, have improved a lot, a lot, a lot, because just in 2011, we had some of the worst music videos I've ever seen. <laughs> And some of them were really great songs. And an example of that is Gabel's Use Melody. Like, as much as I love that song is exactly as much as I hate that music video. It's one of the worst music videos for such a great song. But I see that a lot of the artists and a lot of the bands have improved in some aspects as far as the quality of the video, the storylines within the video. But I think that there are some steps that still need to be made in order to get the maximum out of you know, having a music video, period, but also the way it's consumed. Now, the artists have to figure out what's more important to them. Is it branching out into other markets or is it creativity? And that's because if the focus is to branch out, then on one aspect, our music videos almost have to always match the song. They can't afford to have, you know how you, you, know how you see music videos like R&B music videos or hip hop music videos that the concept is somewhat related, but usually it's like a totally different video from the song. It's just the artist, you know, being creative with the visuals. But if the focus for our bands and our artists is to branch out into other markets, then we need music videos that will explain what the song is about so that if anything if I want to show one of my friends who are either from the states or from the islands I say yo this is what Haitian music sounds like this is one of my favorite songs right now they can watch the video and be like okay so I get it this song is about a man cheating or this song is about poverty or this song is about being in love or whatever it is and I think there's a way that you can do that where it's still very creative and it's not word for word exactly what the song is saying a good example of that is Amonique's and Kwayab, which everybody I've shown that music video, they understand what the song is about. Uh, a lot of them said that they they were hoping that uh, Mac D would be the one to end up with the girl instead of Sanders. But it's still a beautiful, like the visuals are just so nice, the way it shows the country, the way they play with color. It's just different aspects of the video. It's still a lot of creativity there. Another song I would say is Ma Maoye. It doesn't all the way give you the story. I mean, you can watch it and be like, okay, this guy is disagreeing with these people. He's going to get married. That video is, all that it has a few different scenes it's still for the most part kind of one dimensional i feel like they could have made more use with that music video especially the scene with people in that blue suit and he's just you know singing around dancing i feel like they could have added a few more scenes to the video but that's another one that if i show my friends that music video they understand what the song is about so songs like that videos like that are good for bands where your focus is to branch out and reach other markets and captivate other audiences now, if your focus is simply creativity, you're looking at music videos such as Disip's new music video, La Mupi Fo, where it's it's a little bit more on the creative side. I saw Gazman was explaining that there's no need to do black and white to show past and then color to do future or present. You can keep it all in color and just imply that certain parts were in the past and certain parts are present. But a video like that, where it's a little bit looser, it's a little bit more abstract, or I'm trying to think of um, other music videos that are not in the Haitian music industry where Kanye West's Love Lockdown, I believe it was, where something like that and the song are two pretty much different things, but it's a really nice, creative music video. I do have one more thing to say about how the music videos are made, but I'm going to put a pin in that and just talk about how they are released because that other thing is really important and I, I can feel that I might get heated. So we want to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about how the music videos are released. It makes absolutely no sense to me that most of our bands don't have a YouTube channel, their own YouTube channel. I'm talking about a class YouTube channel, Disip YouTube channel, Zinklin 
new look like every band you can think of they don't have their own youtube channel but instead they release their music videos through other channels and that's very disadvantageous for the bands it's advantageous for the channels that are releasing these music videos but long term that actually may do some damage and from time to time i see different bands or different artists celebrating how many views they have on the music video for example jay beats who has quite a few videos that reach million two million three million four million i know at one point gabel's use melody music video had the most views on youtube um i don't know if they're still the most viewed compa music video on youtube as bad as that they're, they're watching because of the song trust me it's not because of the actual video and I'm like, how can you celebrate that? And it's not even on your channel. It's on compa events, or it's on compa groups, or Shokagala, or IT Biography, or Plezi Carnaval, or all of these other channels that put out your music video, but it's not your own channel. If I have a day where I'm like, yo, I just feel like listening to Usher, or not even listen to Usher, but I want to watch a bunch of Usher music videos. There is an Usher channel. I think it's probably Usher Vivo, I'm not sure. But there's an Usher channel that I can go on YouTube and watch nothing but Usher videos, which I've actually done before to show one of my younger cousins. This is when like Mindless Behavior first came out and I was like, let me show you real dancing. And I just spent a day showing him Usher music videos. We can't do that with our industry because y'all don't have your own channels. Or even if I were to type in class music videos, right? Which class I believe has about five music videos. Do you think miraculously like all of them would come out in order? Like you don't want me no, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna type in class music videos and it's gonna be like, you don't want me compa events, you don't want me compa grooves, you don't want me IT biography, you don't want me shogarella. Felvine avant compa events, felvine avant compa. Like that is annoying and nobody's gonna sit through that. You have to be a diehard class fan to sit through that. I definitely am not. So if I wanted to show one of my friends again our songs and our music videos, they're not gonna sit through and be like, all right. So I got this, you don't want me, and then they scroll, 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 scroll. Felvine Avant, scroll, 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 scroll. Bagay Nef, scroll, scroll. Like, they're not gonna do that. Also, it's not beneficial because let's say you have a music video that ends up having a million views and it's uploaded on four different channels by the choice of the band, because I'm gonna talk about that shortly. So you have one music video, four different channels, and it's 250,000 views over here, 250,000 views over here, 250,000 views over here, and 250,000 views over there that is not to celebrate and i don't even count that as a million views when these other artists when rihanna and beyonce and whatever when billboards or whatever talk about their views or their streaming it's because it's coming from one source channel and any other channel that's not authorized to have that music video of that video will be deleted and if that channel does it so much then that channel will be flagged unless the person uploading does something like change the tempo change the pitch so they manipulate they add an intro they add an outro they do something like that so that youtube doesn't detect it. i'm not telling any of y'all to go do that i'm just saying that's like what keeps them safe but otherwise like if it's not on rihanna vivo or beyonce vivo or whatever the youtube channel is it doesn't count as oh they got three million views on this music video my advice is that what what you should do i understand that some bands are probably going to wilfried going to copa groups going to it bio biography or Shokarella, all this stuff because they have a platform but you have to do the groundwork you have to establish your own fan base and you can use their platform in other ways so let's let me just give give the advice as if i was the one controlling a band how i would go about it you can take it if you want if not that's on you so if i had a band or if i had a music video what i would do is i know that wilfried has viewership i know that the lady who runs it biography has viewership. I know that Karel has viewership. Um, he also does the, uh, not Pilanguese, um, Plezi Carnaval channel. I know that all of them have platforms. I would pay them for advertisement, not to have my actual music video up. So what I would do, I would say, yo, I'm just gonna throw some numbers out. I would say, I have this new music video coming out next Monday. So over the course of this week, I would like you to post on your Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter saying, yo, this person has this music video coming out. I'm gonna give you the clip. 
It's a, it, whether it's a behind the scenes or it's an exclusive clip or the promo clip. And I'm going to pay you X amount of money to post this on your various social media. I will pay you, I don't know, $50 or $250 to post it for the weekend and keep it up, you know, so that you don't go back and delete it later. But it'll always be up so that if anytime someone searches this hashtag, it will come up. You know, you do something like that. And if they want to do it, then that's great for you. If they don't want to do it, then that's what it is. Like, just don't don't have your whole music video posted on their channel. Because my question is, if Wilfried and Chocagala and all of these other channels are monetized, are they going to keep track of the views that video get every month and the resources that video has brought in every month and then send you the money every month? Are they going to do that? I doubt it. So if it's on your channel, you generate your fan base, you post it on your various various social media and you get your views that way and if your music video is a good music video if your song is a good song eventually it will get the viewership that it deserves look at omi you know cheerleader oh i think that i found myself a cheerleader right that song had been out for how long and people didn't know about it until somebody overseas remixed it and then everybody started going to watch not only the new music video but also to check out the old music video so if that's what it takes that's what it takes but the point is that i mean only he's probably on a record um label that probably has a 360 deal on him anyway but for you in your case you have it on your own channel and you push it that way and if any of these channels upload your music video to their channel you have it taken down all right so the last thing i wanted to talk about is the actual people in the music videos the models, the vixens, whatever you want to call them, the women in the music videos. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, no sense at all. For me to watch so many Haitian music videos, Haitian people, music videos about Haitian culture, music videos for songs sung about Haitian women, music videos for songs that will be played at Haitian bars, Haitian, Haitian weddings, Haitian funerals, Haitian parties, Haitian, 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 black, 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 Haitian. And for me to constantly see a lack of brown skin or dark skin women in the music videos, that is disgusting. First of all, for y'all same bands, for y'all same artists who constantly do this, Deceit is one of them. Guys, I remember when I saw the preview for the Heartbreak and Misery music video a year ago, I was like, they can keep that. And then this time with Lamo Before, I remember the Koyola music video. I can't remember what song it was, but like, the girl is pretty much white. Ecstasy has a new video out. The girl is pretty much white. And I'm like, have y'all been to Haiti? Have y'all even been to a Haitian bar? Like, who do you see standing in front of you when you're performing? People that look like me or darker. When you have your kids, what are they going to look like? People that look like me or darker. What does your mother look like? People who look like me or darker. What does your aunt look like? She looks like me or darker. And for there to consistently be a lack of dark-skinned women, it's sad. It is sad that it was considered a big deal for Amonique to have a dark-skinned woman in their Enquire music video. Although I love the music video, I thought the woman was beautiful. It's sad that that's supposed to be revolutionary or like, oh my gosh, that should be the norm. That should be the norm. I'm not saying not to ever use light-skinned women, obviously, because we have light-skinned women in Haiti as well. But we ain't walking around here with blonde hair, blue eyes. First of all, it does something when a child is watching a music video from an artist that comes from their country that's always, always, always putting light-skinned women on a pedestal and she's dark-skinned. What do you think that's going to do to her self-esteem? Haiti is an island. We're not like Trinidad and Tobago, where we have such a heavy East Indian population, where you have a lot of East Indians. And then, of course, you have what they call the Douglas, which is when you mix an African with an East Indian. And a lot of people are fair, fair skin or light skin, whatever. We're not an island like many of these other islands where the, it's, the population is pretty split between dark skin and light skin. Haiti is, I call it the blackest island, seriously. 80 to 85% African, you know, and 15 to 20% other. 
And then of the Africans, most of us are brown skin or dark skin. Well, maybe I shouldn't say most because I, I don't have numbers. But whenever I'm in Haiti, I see dark skin. I see a lot of dark skin. And even if you go on Google and just, well, probably should recommend that because you know how they treat us. But even if you go on Google and just type in Haitian and see just a crowd of Haitians, a lot of them will be dark skin. Most of that crowd will be dark skin consistently amongst how many pictures that you come across. We know what the population looks like. The population looks like me. And why are we not represented in the music videos? And it's not something that's happened once or twice. That is the norm, the norm in the Haitian music video. And not just Haitian music videos, because it happens in hip hop videos. It happens in a lot of music videos, but I'm talking about the Haitian music industry. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. The norm for Haitian music videos is to have a super light skin, a Hispanic looking woman, someone who looks more Dominican. And even when we say Dominican, we're not talking about what they call Afro-Dominicans, basically Africans in Dominican Republic. They're talking about the, the lighter skin Dominicans, the ones anyway. That has become the norm for music videos and it's disgusting because again, you are shitting on the women who buy your music. You are shitting on the women who show up to your performances. You are shitting on the women who we are the one that drag our men out to come see you anyway, because half the time, let me keep it right there. But seriously, it does a lot. Like, it, it does a lot to the self-esteem of a young child who is watching this. And it continues the whole self-hatred that we have in various African communities. And that has to change. That really, really, really has to change. So that's all I wanted to say, y'all. Besides that, I would say the music videos are getting better, especially in terms of quality. And I would say mostly in terms of content, too. You guys can keep doing some of what y'all are, are doing, but definitely consider the things that I've put out. That's all I want to say. Remember, all it takes is bravery, and I'm out.